Good morning and welcome to AMA Puget Sound's Coffee Talk series. Our guest today is Tad Richardson. Tad is a digital advertising pioneer and marketing executive who has helped notable nonprofits such as Meals on Wheels and several stakeholders of the former Negro Baseball Leagues, including the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, the Josh Gibson Foundation and the Buck Leonard Association. That is a mouthful. I, I'm not gonna lie, I went through that like five times. <laughs> I'm glad you shortened what I actually sent you. It's in the description. I put it all down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so welcome. Um, we've got a lot to talk about, specifically about um, a couple of the nonprofits um, that I mentioned earlier. But first of all, I, I want to learn a little more about you. So, yeah, give us a little more, a little more about Tad. Sure. Um, I, I like to, to, to tell people I had kind of a, a Gumpian career in digital advertising. Um, I, I was in the right place at the right time with the right companies several times through my career. And um, you, dating back to 99, I got my start in, in digital advertising with the Walt Disney Internet Group. Um, we were down there in the Smith Tower, um, uh, sharing space. Uh, uh, up on uh, with Avenue A, old Avenue A, if anybody remembers that. Um, so, um, you know, got got a really amazing opportunity back then to, to work with Hewlett Packard's global marketing team and learn some incredibly valuable lessons about about brand marketing. And um, so that was one of those kind of gumpy and things. And then uh, another was in 2002, uh, the team at ESPN.com uh, along with at the time a company called Revenue Science based in Bellevue, um, we launched Revenue Science's um, uh, behavioral based targeting technology. It was one of the first commercially uh, you know, uh, available um, uh, technologies to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I eventually went to work for them. Okay. Um, and, and revenue science became audience science and really pioneered the, obviously the behavioral ad space, behavioral targeting space, the, uh, the, the, the network space, mm -hmm. what we now call programmatic media and data management. Um, so, uh, throughout my whole life, I've been doing community building and nonprofit work as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, uh, back in 2017, I moved away from the, I would say, the mainstream digital marketing uh, industry um, after um, starting and launching uh, a, a really successful digital ad agency that's still out there. Um, um, I went really hardcore into small business. Mm -hmm. sure. um, had my own little micro craft based business um, that was all about baseball. Um, and uh, started, I was became a regular at the Fremont Sunday Market and the market scene around Seattle. And I really got to know people within the maker scene and the art scene. And um, and I took I took part in a, a, a small business development program through Business Impact Northwest. Okay. Um, and I, I, I met them through the Seattle Made Group. Mm -hmm. And um, and I sat through the, this this business class, which covered all types of topics about, about small business development. And when we got to the marketing mm -hmm. uh, section, the, the, the person that presented, this was just a few years ago, the person that presented, I just remember part of what they had in their, in their conversation about marketing was direct mail. And I just thought, oh my God, small business and direct mail, I mean, these things are. And so I, I at that point, I remember mm -hmm. talking to uh, Susan Peralt, the director there. And I said, Susan, I think I could, I think I'm inspired to, 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 to get back into marketing and really, you know, help. I, I know I can, can do better. Yeah. And, um, and so, um, I, I know I'm being long winded, uh, a couple years ago, um, I, you know, I, what I kept hearing from small businesses was among the first, the top two fears they have was marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's ubiquitous. Okay. Right. And, and, um, and, you know, I, I just I'd been around enough nonprofits. I'd been doing some fundraising privately for Meals on Wheels over in Spokane for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I, I I matched these two things together, small businesses and, and Meals on Wheels. I created a campaign uh, in 2018, 19 called Waffles for Wheels. This is over in Spokane. OK. 
and um, mm -hmm. and it, it uh, the it, it, in 2019 um, we had over 25 locally owned restaurants participate in a campaign that not only was just kind of a we're going to donate part of each sale to the to to the the uh, to Meals on Wheels, but we're also going to uh, we, we we use the opportunity to teach the small businesses about how to use their their social media effectively. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, what what is absolutely key, as I've seen and we've kind of proved through these programs, is that community is key to small business marketing. Yes. Right? So um, so we, you know, we, we encourage we, we we taught them how to use their social media. Well, we created basically a cohort of these small business owners because there's mm -hmm. certainly a spectrum of people. There's people who are using social media really effectively. Mm -hmm. And there are people who I had to teach them how to use Facebook. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yep. you know, and so then there <laughs> well, anyway, um, this was a, a great campaign that uh, that we, we did not spend a dime on marketing, but we got earned media through uh, two of the three, I guess two of the four major network TV stations, mm -hmm. uh, radio station, the newspaper. Um, and you know, with that coverage in a market like that, it's safe to say that we reached you know, at least over half of the market without spending a dime. Right, right. Uh, and in the process, you know, uh, we, we up-leveled the small business marketing, we created mm -hmm. new revenue for them and we created new revenue and new relationships for Meals on Wheels. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so I'll pause there uh, <laughs> because that's kind of what led us up to, um, to the Negro Leagues. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's a lot. I mean, that's really great information too. And I think a lot of others, especially after the, you know, we've been through such separation from the pandemic and we're looking to kind of build our communities back up, I think ideas like that are really, really going to be important. Um, one thing when I was a salesperson, building your circle of influence was huge. And I think, you know, just building a community, a small cohort of small business owners that are learning together, they're not competing, they're learning together and helping each other, I think is going to be much more important in the future. Yep. I think we're going to see more helping rather than more competition. Yep. Um, I hope so. And that's really what ultimately, you know, is is my my ultimate goal is to teach not just small businesses. Well, well certainly, you know, the advantage, the one advantage that small businesses have over, uh, you know, corporations, enterprises is, is authenticity. Yes. Right. And so um, uh, I, I think that what we're we, you know, I've been in the advertising business long enough to just call it out for what it is. And, and advertising to me is the most insidious weapon of mass destruction ever invented. Um, it's doing a lot of damage to us. It's disconnecting us from who we are as human beings. We're being treated not as human beings. We're treat, being treated as consumers. Yes. Um, when when I, we think about, you know, the traditional, you know, what, what are we trying to do with marketing? Right. Mm -hmm. um, we're, well, we're, we're trying to create value. Uh, yes. we're, we're trying to build trust. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's let's talk about yeah. uh, the, the most uh, the most the most uh, 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 you know targeted group of individuals from an advertising standpoint. The most the most valuable target is is moms, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, so I work for PTA, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. So so you know when when we talk about providing value to moms in in advertising and marketing, you know what mm -hmm. comes to mind. You know, things like coupons and newsletters and book, you know, book clubs, that kind of thing. Well, it's yep. like if you really want to provide value to a mom, help teach their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, help so, moms. Just help them. They need an extra hand. <laughs> they need it. They definitely do. But and, and the biggest thing that they need is to, to is trust that their kids are going to be safe and, and, and have an opportunities yeah. that maybe they didn't have. Right? Yes. So, yeah. So this is kind of what it goes down back to, right? If, if our job mm -hmm. as marketers is to provide value uh, to our to our, our customers, we have to stop treating them as consumers. We have to start treating right. them as human beings. We have to start doing the things that they actually need. And Absolutely. so, so that's you know how can we direct our marketing dollars, our mm -hmm. traditional marketing dollars, into communities, mm -hmm. and and learn how to calculate our ROI a little bit differently, right? The yeah. lives that we bet that we that we affect in a positive way needs to be part mm -hmm. of our ROI as marketing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do want to dig into that a lot more as we, we talk about um, two of the nonprofits that yep. uh, we're here to talk about today. So let's first talk about the Negro Leagues Baseball Art Marketplace. This is so fascinating. And I hadn't actually heard of the art marketplace until you mentioned it to me. I'd heard of the Negro Leagues Baseball. I'd heard of that. But this art marketplace, tell us about that, how you got involved, um, you know, especially with your long work with, um, in nonprofits leading you to this specific organization. Yep. So everything that I just talked about really leads us right to here. And that's, that's, uh, so at the, at the, the, uh, the beginning of 2020, I was, I had my sponsor in place to run meals on or waffles for wheels again over in Spokane. And, and we got hit with the, the, the lockdowns. Yeah. Um, so I, I, so I turned my focus back to my own little small baseball related business. I'm like, how can I, how can I apply this somewhere else? That's, that's going to get that that's going to, 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 create a platform for a group that really needs it right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we were right in the middle of, of our own civil rights movement. And, and so um, I thought of, uh, you know, of uh, the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum as uh, the first beneficiary of a potential campaign that mm -hmm. would bring together a group of artists. Yeah. And so um, real similar exact same model as waffles for wheels we just took we just you know created a, a community of artists and so i just i literally summer of of 2019 i just started recruiting artists that i knew that i that i um was seeing on instagram primarily okay. and and um we you know met with the the negro leagues baseball museum this um this all came together with the help of a partner um travis stewart of johnny studio okay. and um we we just explained what the idea was, what we wanted to do, and uh, he gave us the blessing, and um, we wound up um, recruiting 101 artists to create to to participate in a campaign that ran uh, September through uh, the first week of October of 2020. So 2020 was the 100 year anniversary of the Negro Leagues. Oh wow! And uh, they were running a a, a campaign. Um, on social media, um, they they didn't have their own social media accounts yet. They were that their accounts were still underneath the Negro League Baseball president's personal accounts. Oh, oh. Um, so they set up their own accounts, and um, and uh, and I think that what we what what our camp so the the what our, our campaign really did breathe a lot of life into what they were trying to do at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, we we. We generated so again 101 artists, um, all creating artwork and selling artwork with at least 20% of the proceeds going to the the museum. That was the, okay. the the agreement, and it was really just a handshake agreement, grassroots campaign. Um, so we have 101 different people on from five countries on three continents around the world oh, wow. who are participating in this campaign, and so you can imagine. Again, unfortunately, we have to imagine what the the organic reach was. Absolutely, um, Absolutely. right. But it was it was substantial, and so you know, I we approached this just like a regular commercial campaign with you know co branded um, uh, uh, promotional images that that sure. you know had a similar look and feel and all of that. And so, and then we created the NLB Mark Marketplace website, um, which really is is not so much a marketplace right now as it is a gallery. Um, and um, uh, but you know, we aspire to actually, you know, turn it into an e-commerce marketplace. Okay. Uh, but anyway, this first campaign uh, generated um, through the end of 2020, we wound up generating over $30,000 for the museum. Uh, some of it went to the Josh Gibson Foundation. Some of it went to the Jackie Robinson Foundation. And some of it went to the Buck Leonard Association. Okay. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, I, I couldn't think of a more catchy term. I, I call this community-based marketing. Um, but yeah. it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, it's been very effective. And so what, what happened, um, right before that first campaign, um, I was, uh, I, 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 I had a call with the great grandson of Josh Gibson, who they called the black babe Ruth mm -hmm. and Sean, Sean Gibson runs the Gibson foundation, Josh Gibson foundation up in Pittsburgh. Okay. And, um, 
within the first two minutes of our conversation, Sean changed my perspective and changed our trajectory and, and goal of this, this community of artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and what he said to me was, hey, don't you think if somebody created a painting of Josh Gibson that the Josh Gibson Foundation should get some of that? <laughs> and, right. I, and I just said, you know, Sean, I, th- I think they should get all of it. Right, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, so he, you know, explained to me the dynamics between, you know, the museum, the families, and the whole kind of ecosystem of the Negro Leagues, which is, um, um, you know, uh, 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 something that I would really love to talk about in and of itself is just Negro Leagues baseball. Um, for, mm-hmm. for a lot of people, when they hear baseball, they think uh, baseball sports, you know, ew. I don't want to talk about that. But <laughs> what, what I see in the story of Negro Leagues baseball um, is some common ground uh, mm-hmm. to have really, really difficult conversations, right? Um, we need mm-hmm. to be talking about race. We need to be talking about the Black American experience mm-hmm. in America. And, um, you know, the, the the story of the Negro Leagues has been uh, really buried, um, mm-hmm. just just like just like Juneteenth, just like mm-hmm. Tulsa. Um, yeah. The uh, Negro Leagues... The story of the Negro Leagues has been buried, and mm-hmm. um, and so here's here's the kind of way that I mess with people's heads is is when I you know when I when I say that the story of Jackie Robinson is is one that that uh, there, there's a side to the Jackie Robinson story that is is extremely uh, um, is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, there are several sides of that story that's terrible. Jackie Robinson was absolutely a hero mm-hmm. um, for integrating. Major League Baseball and 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 taking a, a lot of abuse in doing it, but the integration of Major League Baseball killed a top five industry in the Black American economy. Negro Leagues Baseball was, I think, the fourth largest industry in Black America in the, in the first half of of the cent- of the twentieth century. Okay, and and uh was providing probably i would i would say behind the church um the the mm-hmm. most uh, uh effective means of building community sure in black america mm-hmm. and uh so the integration of of major league baseball could have looked like adopting the top five teams from the negro leagues Mm-hmm. Instead, it was let's cherry pick the best players off of the rosters and decimate that those teams, and eventually, yeah. within just a you know a dozen years, yep. really, kill, within ten years, yep. uh, kill an entire industry. So that to me is is so so it's like you know we can talk about you want to talk about baseball let's talk about Josh Gibson and Buck Leonard and Satchel mm-hmm. Paige, uh, yeah. but you want to talk about civil rights and black American history. Um, Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's, that's the the opportunity I see in the story of, of the Negro leagues, but, but um, moving back to the Gibson foundation and and making that connection, Mm -hmm. seeing the things that they're doing in their community, the way that they use baseball to attract inner city kids into Mm -hmm. their programs that include things like digital literacy and uh, uh, leadership training and, and things of that nature. So mm-hmm. um, so what I, what I see when it comes to a, a marketing proposition, mm-hmm. right, again, is what, what we're trying to do as marketers is to build trust. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, the biggest enterprise advertisers buy it, right? Yeah, they sure Ruthless. do. Ruthlessly, right? Yeah. I mean, why right after sex, sex sells and then authenticity. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's easy for a major, you know, an enterprise to to cover up a, a an egregious you mm-hmm. know mistake with advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're trying to build trust, and if if uh, if Microsoft wanted to go into inner city Pittsburgh and set up a community center tomorrow um, and invite the whole community in and tell them it's the best thing ever and it's for them, people would be skeptical. Mm-hmm. They would have to spend marketing dollars yeah. to, to, to get people to trust that this is a place to go. 
Absolutely. And they would have to create partnerships within the community to, mm -hmm. to, to draft off of their trust. Exactly. So, so this is the way I look at it is <laughs> uh, the, the way to, 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 to make a difference in our communities, to build trust, to make, to, to add value to people's lives is to spend your marketing dollars on nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Don't just write them a check. Don't just cut them a check, right. but actually engage with them and help turn them into a, a platform that will create tangible marketing value for you. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We, you know, corporations, you know, we, you won't let us tax you and, and the world is going to hell in a handbag right now. Mm -hmm. So the, as I see it, the, the, the one easy way to, to make, the world a better place truly mm -hmm. to make our communities better is to to direct traditional marketing dollars into our communities absolutely and and, and so because corporate america is is trying to be better about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And because mm -hmm. they need to create trust in their marketing and because they need to create value for their customers. I look at the, the family foundations of the Negro Leagues as the absolute perfect plug-in for corporate marketing dollars to make a difference because that's what they're trying to do in their community already. All you got to do is use your marketing dollars to light them up and yes. problems start getting solved rapidly. Exactly. 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 <laughs> and, and the other thing too with corporations, you know, the people that you're serving, these might be your future employees. Exactly. And that's really what we're trying to do. And so I don't want to let a cat out of the bag. And frankly, we don't have, so I won't, I won't say too much, but we're, we're working on a relationship right now with, uh, uh, with a community of black owned IT professional of businesses, over 400 of them, uh, that are very well connected, you know, through, um, uh, you know, within the, the IT, uh, the technology industry with, uh, mm -hmm. within, you know, with HBCUs. Yeah. Um, and so what, what we really are trying to, to create is a, a relationship that can provide the technology, uh, that, uh, and resources that these organizations need to do their business, mm -hmm. but also to create, you know, computer labs so that mm -hmm. they can, and, and programming. Yes. Curriculum, yes. curriculum, actual help with curriculum yes. uh, that, that we, we can literally, you know, s start creating curriculum that, that they're already, again, teaching. Uh, the Buck mm -hmm. Leonard Association has an amazing um, um, reading program um, that they do with, with preschool kids. And, um, and so we, we can take them all the way from preschool, you know, mm -hmm. into college and into the workplace through these really strategic connections, again, with, you know, with black owned IT companies mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the relationships that, that these um, organizations have with universities, like the Josh mm -hmm. Gibson Foundation has great relationships with Pitt and Duquesne. Mm -hmm. Uh, Buck Leonard Association is developing great relationships with North Carolina State and uh, North Carolina Wesleyan. Um, so anyway, that that's ultimately the goal, right? Is, is yeah. you know, the, 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 I, the, the tech companies have these initiatives. They want to, mm -hmm. to, to provide accessibility to technology. They want mm -hmm. to provide digital literacy. They want to provide job training. Do it through these organizations and you can you can accomplish all your goals at once. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Those nonprofits already have, they already have the ear of the community, <laughs> you know, it's. Yeah. And, it's, and, and this historical re relevance, that's just mm -hmm. rich in the story of, of the Negro mm -hmm. leagues that, that honestly it, it needs to be celebrated. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So when you were going through the, the campaign um, through the marketplace, you know, you talked about different obstacles, like there wasn't even a social media, <laughs> there was no social media, there was no website. Um, so, you know, those were like the biggest obstacles. So once you got past those and you were using the storytelling, you know, what other, you know, how, I mean, obviously you've, you've talked about how effective it was, but what other tactics were you using and how were you using the storytelling in what ways, what tools were you using for that? Uh, community. Yeah. Um, everything's through community, honestly. Um, uh, so, so we, we ran a second campaign. We'll talk about that one, um, for specifically for the Josh Gibson foundation last summer. Um, um, 
and this one what was 75 artists from i think from five countries again okay. um but uh maybe uh, there was definitely more than it was more than canada and the us um mm -hmm. but uh the 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 whole idea is to you know again create partnerships so that mm -hmm. we get the reach that we need right that's we're still yeah. you know in the game of 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 you know we have to create reach and frequency so we're doing this in an organic way and we're in mm -hmm. in and in order you know to try and beat the algorithms of social of you know the social media platforms mm -hmm. um, we use the power of community so when you've got again you've got 75 uh, we did some pretty guerrilla stuff with this campaign too. Um, mm -hmm. We we were specifically on Twitter. We were we were um, tagging um, members of the Baseball Writers Association of America. Mm -hmm. um, we actually sent a bunch of baseball cards to members of the Baseball Writers of Association of America. This mm -hmm. campaign was specifically trying to draw attention to the Gibson Foundation's campaign to have the Major League Baseball MVP awards renamed in Josh Gibbs for Josh Gibson. Okay. Um, yeah, check out jg20mvp.com. That's that's their website, and it's it's a really really great website to to just educate yourself a little bit. Um, but uh, anyway, so the, the the real key was to develop um, you know community relationships. Mm -hmm. So um, podcasters, webcasters, bloggers, um, we we created a campaign. Uh, the campaign we created for the Josh Gibson Foundation was all about uh, baseball card art. Uh, mm -hmm. So this was uh, 75 artists who made you know in, uh, unique baseball cards. Uh, it, for the most case, there was a couple other pieces that were different. But um, so we have this whole baseball card collectibles community that we can really engage and talk to. Um, and then again, we were we were working with uh, you know, this whole network of of influencers mm -hmm. um, and. You know that the the the, the simple I think uh, formula of a great cause and a community of small business owners invites earned media. Yeah. So yeah. that that campaign was picked up by uh, Beckett Media. Um, was a really big. They're a big um, sports collectibles uh, organization. They picked it up. There was an article on Newsweek, um, and and uh, yeah, it's it's just it's it's. It's simple. Yeah, it, it really is. It's that simple. It's a community of people and a great cause, mm -hmm. and and cohesive marketing. You know, so again, yes. it's it's marketing. You know, it's 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 creating co-branded ads, basically. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. But, but the the campaigns, the effect of the campaigns, the first one the, the, for the museum in 2020, that was just a, a one month campaign, and during that campaign, the 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 average growth from the people who participated was something like 30% um, in their audience. So within a month, their audience grew by 30%. Uh, for the, the Gibson campaign, uh, which ran longer, the average growth during the campaign was almost 50%. 40, Whoa. 47% on average, right? So there were some that way exceeded that. And I threw out the outliers. Wow. Um, so that's the secret that's the yep. secret sauce um it's yep. you know it's it beats the algorithms and mm -hmm. and, uh, and it, it creates actual lift actual yep. results and, and you know, then that gibson campaign took on a whole other level so what we did with that campaign to again create create more more people who are part of it is mm -hmm. we turned it we turned it into a tournament and then we got we, we went out and recruited a whole panel of 30 celebrity judges oh wow that's so, so and and it was a gamut of people, you know, um, mm -hmm. lots of writers. Um, uh, you, you know, Greg Greg Proops, Greg Proops, yep. the guy from Whose yep. Line Is It Anyway? He was one of our judges. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so you know, again, it's like you create you create these these you know silos of people who have specific roles within the community, and you get them involved, mm -hmm. and you give them an opportunity to participate. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's. Unfortunately, you know, vanity is a big thing today. And yeah. like I tell people, you don't have to be vain to take advantage of the fact that other people are. So, you know, <laughs> give as many people as you can an opportunity to participate and be heard and be seen. Mm -hmm. um, and and, you know, that's that's again, it's like the secret sauce to organic growth. Mm -hmm. Humanity. But, 
<laughs> yeah, but but what we're trying to do, you know, again with this whole big thing is is create a platform that you know um, Microsoft will look at and go, oh yeah, that's that's absolutely worth a seven figure investment, right? You know, because yeah. ultimately what the the investment is in is in the programming um, that is yeah. is is going to you know give access to kids who don't have it right now mm -hmm. and, and show them a path where one does not appear to them right now. Um, exactly. I'm, get, I'm getting ready tomorrow. Um, I'm going back to Rocky Mount, North Carolina, um, which is where the Buck Leonard Association is. Um, oh. It's uh, um, and it's also the birthplace of the uh, jazz legend Thelonious Monk and uh this this town is one of those towns that a lot of the tech companies might consider to be a last mile type community oh really uh, it's it's rural yeah. um it it but it used it used to be thriving it used mm -hmm. to it was like the midway point between miami and new york okay. on the rail railway there was you know thriving tobacco industries and textile industries based around the cotton industry and and then you know those industries started going away. The city got bypassed by the interstate, and and it's literally a, a town where there's trees growing out of the side of buildings downtown. <laughs> That's it's, crum awesome. it's crumbling, yeah. um, and and it's a city that um, is just uh, metaphorically, uh, like literally, um, divided by train tracks, mm -hmm. and on one side of the tracks it's mostly poor and black yep. and on the other side it's not and this is a community that is over 50 percent african-american or black mm -hmm. and um and so again you know what i see here is a family-run nonprofit in the buck leonard association um that has for 20 years been really scraping by to provide uh you know, good programming, good options and hope for kids in their community. And, you know, mm -hmm. haven't had the the means really to do it, haven't had the know-how, haven't yeah. had, you know, the community of, of people to ra really rally around them and see what I see, which mm -hmm. which is that that organizations like them are, are the, the, the perfect conduit, um, the, the perfect partner for mm -hmm. to, to meet all of these ambitious goals of, of corporate right. America to, right. to, you know, provide access to educate and, and to give opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And let's, let's talk about uh, the Buck Leonard Association just, just for a brief moment more um, because they went through a rebrand. Yeah. We talk about that because I think most, most marketers we've been through a rebrand and we all have stories <laughs> good and bad. And I'm just curious, you know, especially as a nonprofit, especially with the obstacles you were just talking about, how did that go and what kind of budget and who was involved and how did it go? You know, that kind of thing. What did you learn? What well, would you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this computer in here. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I'll take a moment for a second. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. My apologies. No so the, this is the beautiful thing again about what we're doing is it's all community based. Okay. And um, and so what happened is uh, a friend of mine. Well, first of all, uh, Sean Gibson introduced us to or introduced me to the family of of Buck Leonard, mm -hmm. and um, we, uh, you know, I, I I immediately went to their website. And it looked terrible. I mean, it was really bad. Sorry, Miss Rose. Miss Rose, or Rose Hunter is their executive director. She's Buck's uh, stepdaughter. And she built the website. She probably, she was 75, I'm guessing, when she built the website. Um, yeah, they, had yeah. <laughs> they had never had a logo. Um, and so we created a logo for them. Okay, and, you know, okay. This, this uh, I'm afraid that my computer is going to die here. Hold on. Uh-oh. Okay. We'll talk One second. <laughs> this outlet's not working. 
<laughs> this is the fun part of doing live. I know, right? You so are sorry. live. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, but uh, so, so uh, um, yeah, we uh, a friend of mine saw what we were doing with mm -hmm. uh, with the Negro Leagues baseball, and he just reached out and offered his help. Awesome. Um, so there's two things that came together. The first thing that we did was we rallied our artist community to basically crowdsource a logo for them. Okay. Um, and a, a friend of mine, an old colleague, uh, I guess an old client, um, reached out and said he wanted to help, and he built them the website. Okay. So it was all of the work, all of their rebrand was done completely pro bono. It started with my wife and I doing just real thorough, um, you know, interviews with them and creating messaging framework. Right. Okay. And then we just, you know, tra transferred that messaging into the website and and got a, you know, a good enough MVP type website up and running for them. And, and certainly, you know, we want that to continue to develop over time, too. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd say, you know, the key to a rebrand is is the messaging framework. Right. Right. You know, um, it's the absolute, you know, you have to know who you are, mm -hmm. what, what you provide and 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 who your audience is. Absolutely. So you were literally starting from scratch. Like you were not even rebranding. You were just branding. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that's okay. true. Yeah. That's so you, I mean, in the last two years, you basically kind of went through a lot of things with a couple of different organizations and what has been your biggest learnings with, with all of the work that you've done the last two years? Uh, community is, yeah. You know, I'm going to just keep repeating that. Sorry for the lighting now. Um, but community is absolutely the key. Yeah. Um, and and it works. Mm -hmm. It sure does. It does. I, I, in many of my roles, I have always said, you need to look, we need to be humans first. And we need to talk to our audience as though they are humans. And one thing that you said earlier, the difference, one of the, one of the advantages of a small business compared to a, a corporation is, besides authenticity is they are able to get to know their customers like sometimes yeah. on a first name basis you know you can't yeah. do that when you're in a you know a ceo of a large corporation you're not going to know your customers you're just going to see data right and and you're going to put out marketing that condescends to us and makes you believe that you actually care about us thank you right yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, what I what I just keep saying to people is stop telling us how great you are with your advertising and prove it. Yeah. Yep. Prove it. Prove prove it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, again, it's like, hey, corporate America, you won't let us tax you. And and look what's happening. I mean, right. you know, why am I paying a four dollar toll to use the highway when Amazon is running how many trucks through here a day without paying a cent? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I mean, right? I totally, yep. I know it stinks. It, it stinks. Yeah. So, so the alternative is, you know, um, put your marketing into the communities Yep. and, and the good news is you don't, you don't really have to do it. You, <laughs> I, I have a, here, here's, here's a, here's what I would do if I mm -hmm. were the, uh, if I were the marketing director, the, 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 the CMO of T-Mobile, um, who's I, so again, I've, I've just, I've driven from, uh, Kirkland mm -hmm. to Rocky Mount, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and then back. And now I'm back again. Yep. And so I've seen a lot of, a lot of outdoor advertising <laughs> and T-Mobile is co it covers more of America yeah. than, than anyone. There's lots of big, bright pink billboards out there. Mm -hmm. If I were T-Mobile, what I would do, there's also a lot of trash yeah. all over. And yep. if I were T-Mobile, what I would do is I would go out and I would partner with local trash collecting, you know, junk collecting businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would um, uh, offer to, to you know, rebrand some of their vehicles. I would mm -hmm. provide pink jumpsuits, magenta jumpsuits to everybody. And I would create a way to uh, pick up and clean up our, our highways with mm -hmm. teams of people in yep. bright magenta clothing and, and, and equipment. I love that idea instead of a billboard because I, I love that idea. It just, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not yeah. a big fan of billboards quite honestly. <laughs> no, I, 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 again, you know, I just, you know, three yeah. trips now across the country and the country's full of trash. It's yeah. literal trash that people are throwing out their window and it's trash that we're being bombarded with in, in, in yeah. marketing. And exactly. It's like, we can do better. We can do exactly. better. Yep. Exactly. 
Oh my gosh. We, we could keep talking. <laughs> there are so many things that you and I could be talking about. Um, you know, both of our backgrounds in nonprofit. It's just, yeah, the things that we've seen, it's staggering. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, is there any, before we, before we close, cause we did go over a little bit, is there anything that you want to retouch or is anything that we didn't touch on that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, um, certainly, um, one of the things I like to do with people when I, when I start talking about Negro leagues, baseball is, is kind of challenge what they know a little bit. And, you know, I ask them things like, you know, do, do you know who Babe Ruth is? And um, well, of course, you know, everybody's heard of Babe Ruth. It's really yeah. ubiquitous. And, and so, well, what about Josh Gibson? You know, and, and there's very few people that know about Josh Gibson. Mm -hmm. um, just like, you've spent time educating yourself about Juneteenth and about mm -hmm. Tulsa and about all of the other atrocities and, and whitewashings that, that have gone on in America. I really encourage people to learn about mm -hmm. Negro Leagues baseball. Yeah. Um, you know, visit the Josh Gibson Foundation's website, um, uh, joshgibson.org, visit buckleonard.org um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, see what they're trying to do. And, and uh, you know, they, they're in a really unique position because they do have these amazing, um, uh, you know, inherent uh, relationships with Major League Baseball, with Major League Baseball Players Association mm -hmm. and, you know, with Major League Baseball's RBI program and things like that. They've got these really great relationships. And so they're really, really poised yeah. to, to become... The, the kind of platform that that corporate you know advertisers need mm -hmm. um, to, to 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 market to us in in a, a healthier way. Yes, exactly. Marketing in a healthier way. I like that. Yeah. There is so much. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. There are a lot of opportunities that over the next few years it'll be interesting to see, and hopefully, hopefully the corporations do listen and and start to do their part. Yeah. Bigger the draws. Yeah. Awesome. Tad, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for um, your patience as we push this episode back a week. Um, I really appreciate that and and sharing everything that you that you've learned over the last two years. Um, I've put as many links in the, in the description below as possible that you yeah. shared with me. Um, so like he said, everyone check out the links below and, and learn more. Um, there are only a few days left of Black History Month, but that doesn't mean it should be just one month. We should yeah. be learning this all year. Yep. Absolutely. All year. 365. Exactly. Except for leap year. We get, we get one more day in leap year. to learn more. <laughs> right. right. That's, that's the day you can learn about cool Papa Bell. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. And everyone, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, please subscribe. We have, our goal is 100. We need 10 more subscribers. I sound like I'm in a telethon now. So <laughs> thank you and have a great day. Thank Bye. you.